All right. Um, hello, I'm Obi Anamnachu with Anant Corporation. Um, today's webinar is on Databricks and Apache Spark. I've been working with Anant Corporation for about a year. Uh, we mostly do Cassandra stuff, but I also have interest in things that can be used for data science, um, and that's where Apache Spark comes in. Uh, so what we're going to talk about today is an introduction to what Apache Spark is, introduction to what Databricks is, and then we're going to go into a bit of what Databricks offers beyond Apache Spark. Um, <clears throat> and this is a lead into a potential series of webinars on how you can replicate some of that functionality yourself without going through Databricks. Um, so first things first, what is Spark? Um, so Spark is so an open source project uh, data management tool specifically for cluster computing, <clears throat> but with other um, features that it comes out of the box with, um, make it a good data analytics engine. Um, specifically what Apache Spark does over previous technologies like um, Hadoop or MapReduce is it does a lot of its intermediate operations fully in memory without writing their uh, results back to the disk, which increases the total speed of your processing. Um, like I said, it's descended from Hadoop and MapReduce, which are sort of algorithms or data processing tools um, that make it easy to do as long as you can reduce your process to map step and, redu and um, reduce step, you can uh, basically contract that out, that work out to other systems in order to do distributed computing. Um, but besides those, that functionality, uh, Spark also processes SQL queries on data um, that's stored in Spark, either in RDDs or in data frames. Um, it processes SQL queries. It processes streaming data. Um, you can do a lot of work with machine learning models inside Spark as well. And it also has, have, has its own graph processing engine called GraphX. Databricks is a comparison. Um, it's also a data analytics server. But this one is a managed service in the cloud. It is not the only managed data analytics service. Um, there are others like Strat.io um, or Stratio. Um, but Databricks is famous and specifically well liked because its developers are also some of the original developers of Apache Spark. Um, so Databricks contains a modified Spark instance, which is called Databricks Runtime, which has some improvements and optimizations over base Spark, both for normal processing and for connections to the things <clears throat> that we're going to talk about a little bit. Um, that might optimize your workflow depending on what you want to use it for. Um, it connects to a number of external technologies and a lot of internal tools and it's cloud native on Azure and AWS. Um, you can see over on the right to their sort of infrastructure um, on at the very top is the Databricks workspace where you can work with collaborative notebooks or monitor your production um, jobs. And then underneath that is the Databricks runtime is based on Apache Spark, but also includes things like TensorFlow and PyTorch and their proprietary things, MLflow and Delta Lake, um, and all that's built on top of cloud services. So the point of today's webinar is to do a feature comparison, talk about what the difference is between Apache Spark and Databricks, um, and then see later on in future episodes of the series whether this functionality is Databricks specific and how hard it is to manage that sort of thing yourself um, or how easy. Uh, basically, the point is that this series should allow you to easily know whether or not you paying for Databricks is something that you want or need to do. Uh, but the first comparison is between Databricks runtime, the engine, and Apache Spark. Um, so as you can see, uh, they both have all five of those components, Spark SQL, Spark Streaming, MLlib, GraphX, and Apache Spark Core. Um, and while the image on the right does not actually show um, that all these languages are compat in the Spark Core API are compatible with Apache Spark normally, uh, they are. You can use R, Scala, you can use Python, um, all to work with Spark and also to work with Databricks Runtime. 
Um, so what Databricks Runtime offers is improved performance on some specific internal operations, um, some general tweaks that are supposed to improve general performance, and better connections to some external technologies that are not within Spark. Um, but Databricks is specifically a cloud service. Uh, so if you want full control over your deployment and you want to deploy it locally or on bare metal, uh, that's something you would need to go with base Apache Spark or some other program for. And this is Databricks' own comparison uh, between Apache Spark and the Databricks runtime. As you can see, some of the improvements that they've specifically made are um, the faster writes to S3, which is an external data lake uh, that we'll talk about a little bit later. Uh, but it means that you can have faster access to your data if it's stored there compared to connecting that service to Apache Spark on your own. Um, something like wrapper release cycles is supposed to generally um, improve the speed of everything that Spark does, whereas compute optimization during joins and filters means that they've tweaked um, the, those operations within Spark uh, in order to work more efficiently and thus faster. Um, so the first external feature that Databricks specifically provides is notebooks. Um, they have Notebooks generally are web-based interfaces for edit editing specific types of documents, uh, so that your notebook files, uh, which are made up of cells that can all contain a bunch of different types of data. Uh, so your code block is pretty standard. Uh, markdown blocks are also generally pretty standard. You can embed any sort of markdown code in images. Um, you can do normal data visualization if your code produces graphs. Um, <clears throat> You can see those update as you rerun them. And you can also have interactive elements um, if they are uh, compatible with your notebook type. Um, so Databricks notebooks aren't the only types of notebooks that can be used with Apache Spark. Um, in one of our previous series on machine learning with Spark and Cassandra, we actually use an instance of Jupyter notebooks connected to Cassandra and configured to use Spark. Um, in order to run our machine learning models um, using MLlib specifically, which is part of Apache Spark. Uh, but generally all those features make notebooks great development tools for data management activities, especially machine learning activities. If you need to train models and work with them, um, working inside a notebook is an easy way to do that. Uh, it's possible to run notebooks with Spark yourself, like I was saying, um, but Databricks also comes with its own notebooks. So machine learning frameworks. Obviously, uh, as mentioned before, both Spark and Databricks runtime include MLlib, which is Spark's inbuilt machine learning framework. Uh, it can do a lot of the things that these other frameworks that we're about to talk about can do. Um, but developers often train and are more familiar with these other machine learning frameworks, things like scikit-learn, TensorFlow, uh, PyTorch, those types of things. Um, but they're not by nature um, compatible for a distributed system. Uh, and, da and Databricks offers these integrations um, with Databricks runtime and these machine learning frameworks uh, so that you can run them in distributed systems and get the advantage of faster speeds um, and more processing power than a single machine can have. Um, there are some standalone tools for connecting these frameworks uh, to Apache Spark. In fact, some of them are maintained by Databricks. Um, but what they do is they replace the processing engine, the like multi-threading engine um, that these use to do their machine learning quickly on single computers um, and replace them with Spark processing, either on a single computer, um, which would not give you much speed, um, or on clusters. Another thing um, that Spark comes with standard is MLflow, which is an auto ML framework. It does a lot of the management aspects of your machine learning. Um, like I say here, it can keep track of, automate, and manage a bunch of different aspects of your machine learning process. Um, specifically, you can train many models of different algorithm types, different parameter settings. Um, you can do hyperparameter tuning for example, for a bunch of different values at once and keep track of their performance um, over those different values. And MLflow will keep track of that data for you. 
Um, you can also iterate on your machine learning algorithms and MLflow will keep track of the different uh, iterations. Um, and MLflow allows you, or really any auto ML framework, um, allows you to have reproducible workflows. Um, and they also come with some sophisticated deployment tools um, that make deploying your models once you're sure they're trained properly, uh, which is also something that was covered in a previous webinar on machine learning with Spark and Cassandra, um, some of the different possible ways to deploy models once they're trained. Um, but it makes that much easier to do. Uh, it's also possible to manage all of these processes by hand or use other ML management frameworks like AutoML as one. Um, but having something in place that comes standard and also connects with the Spark process and can handle all those machine learning frameworks that we discussed before uh, might be a useful thing uh, when you're looking at whether to use Databricks or whether to manage your own Apache Spark. Um, Databricks also comes with a bunch of BI tool integrations. Uh, so if you use any of these business intelligence tools for visualizing or otherwise managing your data, um, generating reports, all that sort of thing, um, Databricks offers you connectors um, that both, well, allow you to see data in Spark in those tools, and then also see the output of those tools inside your Databricks, um, inside your web portal layer. And then Delta Lake, uh, or Data Lakes more generally, Data lakes are cloud storage solutions. Um, they store both structured and unstructured data. Uh, as you can see, um, there are different levels of uh, organization in the data that's being stored in Delta Lake. You can see in the image over on the right. Um, but basically, it can store blob data like videos, images, things like that. And it can also store key value, store type data things that are organized in columns and that sort of thing. Um, so these are generally cloud platforms, uh, cloud storage solutions, because they can handle out data. They have a whole bunch of storage. Um, so Amazon Web Services S3, Azure Data Lake Storage, and Google Cloud Platform Cloud Storage are examples of those, as well as uh, Hadoop HDFS, which is Hadoop Distributed File System. Um, they can all be used as sort of like primary storage slash backup for your data, which can then be grabbed from your data lake, bought into Databricks, or if you want to do it manually into an Apache Spark or other type of um, data and analytics system in order to do processing. Um, so Delta Lake is a service that Databricks provides, which sits on top of your existing data lakes. Um, based on Apache Parquet or Parquet, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Um, but what it does is it eases your both ingestion um, via streaming or batch data ingestion, um, and it keeps track of how structured the data is. Um, and then it allows you to easily grab it to do analytics and machine learning on it later. Uh, so it also has a bunch of things like uh, you can ensure that you have asset transactions. You can use Delta Lake to do schema enforcement on ingested data. Um, and you can use it just like normal data lakes um, for very reliable storage. And that makes it a good use for backup and restore uh, functionality. All right, uh, so we have time for questions. Uh, if you have some, you can put them in the chat. Um, but if not, we will be moving on to finish up today. All right, uh, if there are no questions, um, then what we've done today is sort of set up for a future series about things you can do by hand to add functionality to Apache Spark by looking at Databricks, which already has a bunch of these integrated functions already. Um, this has been a non-corporation. Um, 
if you would like to work with us or work for us, uh, we're reachable at solutions at anant.us or by phone. And if you are in the YouTube comments uh, for this video, uh, remember to like and subscribe, leave a comment down below. Um, if you have questions or email us like mentioned before. Thank you for your time. Good night.